Yeah, in this particular video, I'm going to discuss about the nucleophilic substitution reactions. Um, I've already dealt with uh, electrophilic substitution reactions in my previous video. Now let's see what are these uh, nucleophilic substitution reactions. Uh, if you take the example of the hydrolysis of ethyl chloride in the presence of a base, we can see that the product which is formed is ethyl alcohol and Cl minus. Here, the Cl minus is replaced by OH minus here. So OH replaces Cl minus. So it's a substitution reaction. And here, the nucleophile OH minus is a nucleophile is replacing another nucleophile. So it's a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So a nucleo nucleophilic substitution reaction is a reaction in which a nucleophile replaces another nucleophile. Yes. This is what is a substitution reaction as the name suggests as a nucleophile is substituting another nucleophile in the substrate. It is called as nucleophilic substitution reactions. And here the kinetics uh, or the rates of the reactions can explain here, can explain here whether the nucleophilic reaction is taking place in one step or in several steps and on which step the rate of the reaction depends and where is a nucleophile coming and attacking it whether it's from the front side or the back side of the living group. If you take for example the alkaline hydrolysis of um, yes ethyl chloride here if we see that if the concentrations of these reactants, initial concentrations of this is varied, the rate is also varied. If this is double, that means it becomes two times. If this reactant and the reagent has been doubled, the rate of the reaction is also doubled. So if the concentration is increased, rate is increased. If the concentration of the reactants is decreased, the rate is decreased. So we can say that the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of both the reactants. Here, the concentration of ethyl chloride and OH minus. So if we remove the proportionality uh, here, uh, the proportionality constant K is introduced. So rate is equal to K into the concentration of ethyl chloride and the concentration of OH minus here. So this is a second order reaction, which means that the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of both the reactants and is directly proportional to the concentration of both the reactants. So the name SN2, which means the S means substitution, N is nucleophilic as a nucleophile is substituting another nucleophile, it's SN, and the two, it's a bimolecular reaction, which means that the rate of the reaction depends on subs uh, concentration of the both the reactants, substrate and the reagent here. Yes. And yes, uh, bimolecular and it depends on the concentration of both the haloalkane and the concentration of the nucleophile here. Yes. Uh, now let's look at the mechanism of this SN2 reaction, how this is happening here. Um, if you see that here, the methyl bromide is reacting with OH minus, resulting in the formation of methyl alcohol and Br minus, and this process uh, will proceed through a transition state here. If you say this carefully here, here the nucleophile that is the attacking nucleophile is coming from the back side of the molecule that is methyl bromide. That means just opposite to the direction of the leaving nucleophile. It's just opposite to the one which is leaving here. And this is at the uh, 180 degrees. If you see this, the attacking nucleophile is attacking the carbon just the 180 degrees to the plane of the CBR bond. So they're uh, leaving, uh, this is attacking nucleophile and the leaving nucleophile are just in the opposite directions and the attacking nucleophile is coming and attacking from the backside. Yes. <clears throat> so as a reaction is progressing uh, towards the formation of the product, it proceeds through a transition state here. We can see the transition state where the uh, 
OH and the Br that is attacking and the leaving nucleophiles are connected to the carbon atom. Uh, carbon atom here, uh, as it is proceeding, the CBr the COH bond strengthens. This is strength strengthened, and this is getting weakened. The leaving uh, the CBr bond gets weakened, and the COH bonds get strengthened as the, uh, the reaction is proceeding forward here. And uh, the hybridization in this is sp3 here uh, of the carbon atom. Yes, this is sp3 carbon. Uh, it's a tetrahedral geometry. If you can see this tetrahedral geometry. And uh, when we see that uh, the hybridization in this transition state is changed to sp2. Uh, it's imagined that the attacking and the new leaving nucleophile are uh, getting uh, are imagined to be attached to the lobes of the p orbital here. Yes, the attacking and the leaving nucleophile are attached to the Mm, two lobes of the p orbital, unhybridized p orbital, as it is sp2 hybridized. This carbon atom, there is an hybridized p orbital, and the OH and Br are getting attached to the two each to the uh, each uh, to the one lobe of uh, these p orbitals. And if you look at the transition state of this SN2 reaction here, so this is a central carbon, and this is a attacking nucleophile OH minus, and this is the leaving group that is br minus both of them are attached to the carbon atom to the p orbitals of the uh, to the lobes of the p orbital each one of the lobes of the p orbital yes and <coughs> one more thing as this happens we can see that the configuration here of the product the methyl alcohol is completely reversed the which is a back side and this is on the front side is reversed so what we can observe is is the inversion in the configuration the configuration is completely reversed and this is called as walden inversion yes this is called as walden inversion uh, it looks as if the molecule has turned inside out it uh, the uh, attacking nucleophile is coming from the back side and the, uh, in, and the configuration is inverse here, which is called as Walden inversion. So uh, it's called an inv uh, Walden inversion and the molecule looks as if it is completely turned inside out here. And the hybridization is changed from sp3 to sp2 and the shape of this is so it's sp2 hybridized and the oh and br are attached to each of the lobes of this p orbital it is uh, trigonal bipyramidal yes trigonal bipyramidal shape the shape of this transition state is trigonal bipyramidal and this is very unstable and the state exists only for 10 to the power of minus 12 seconds and the transition state cannot be isolated as the intermediates are isolated since it exists for very less time that is 10 to the power of minus 12 seconds this cannot be isolated so the ray uh, the it's a concerted reaction that means it is proceeding through a single step and this is the rate determining step of the reaction so the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of both the reactants that is the OH minus and the alkyl halide here and the energy which is necessary to break a bond here that is CBr bond is getting broken here uh, is supplied by the formation of COH bond here so the formation of the bond between the carbon and the nucleophile provides energy which is needed to break the bond in between the carbon and the Br. So the energy which is required to break the bond is provided by the formation of a new bond that is COH bond here. Yes. And <coughs> uh, yes. And yeah. so the inversion in configuration of uh, the product can be clearly seen when we, or can be demonstrated when we take the optically active alkyl halide as a starting product here. If you take this as S, 
uh, what's optical activity is uh, ability to rotate the plane polarized light is called as optical activity. If you take this optically active, that is S, uh, the ability to uh, rotate the plane polarized light towards the left or the right is called as optical activity. And if you take S to bromobutane here, the configuration of the product is R here. So it's completely inverse. The configuration is inverse here, S to R. We can clearly see that. So the optical activity is reversed here. And it's a stereospecific reaction. And if we see the uh, potential energy diagram here, we can see that the energy of this transition state is much higher when compared to that of the reactants or the products. And it is proceeding through a single transition state. So this suggests that it's a single step, that's a concerted reaction, concerted process with a, with a single transition state. Yes. And uh, if you see the characteristics of this SN2, it's a second order reaction, which means that the rate of the reaction depends upon the concentration of both the reactants. So it's a bimolecular. Concerted reaction, which means that it's a single step reaction proceeding through a single transition state. And the negative charge is spread throughout the transition state here. Yes, if we see this here, which one? Yeah. Uh, the negative charge is spread. This is negative and this is negative. The negative charge is spread in the transition state in between the leaving group and the attacking group here, yes. Uh, and the energy which is required to break the bond is supplied by the formation of the new bond and the configuration of the product is completely inversed. So this is called as Walden inversion and the hybridization in the starting product is sp3 which is changed to sp2 in the transition state and, uh, and these are the characteristics of the SN2 reaction. Let's discuss about the SN1 in my next video. Yes, do watch it.